Hey everybody, we're going to be talking to Ponca today, any minute now. Um, Ponca is at her home studio in TJ, um, and we did a test already, so she should have a good connection. Um, just waiting for Ponca to come on. Um, while we're waiting... Um, I see some people joining. While we're waiting for Ponka to get on, we're gonna have um, Sunday, Monday, we're not gonna do a video. We're gonna keep adding these to YouTube. I'm, I'm sure some of you are subscribers already. There's quite a few people that are joining and watching the videos that, if they miss the live version. Um, we're not gonna be doing a video on Sunday or Monday. We're gonna try and stick to them for Tuesday. Oh, Ponka's here, so. We're gonna try and do them Tuesday through Saturday and stick to one o'clock and then be adding them to YouTube. So um, let's add Ponka to the conversation. Let's see. Hi, Tom. Hi. Hey, what's you up? You're pacing? <laughs> I am. I'm a pacer. This is going to be hard. <laughs> I'm kind of antsy all the time, too. I don't sit down very long. Yeah. Uh, well, I, cool. I, think I, I got a good spot. Oh. Yeah, you look you look clear, and uh, I can hear you. I don't know if, if people have a problem. If you notice that I go blurry, maybe I need to get off of the Wi-Fi here or get onto my uh, cell service. You're a little blurry. Yeah. I'm blurry? You're a little blurry. But uh -oh. you're going, you're getting clearer now. Yeah, you're blurry. A little blurry. You're like cops right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me let me see my connection. Because it was a problem before. So you're I'm, good. At, I'm at bread and salt right now. I had to come and do some maintenance because I also am checking on the building and stuff. So yeah. Is it any better? Am I clear now? Yeah, you're you're super clear. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's like a, it's, yeah, it's the, that spot back there, the internet doesn't really work. No, you know, the Wi-Fi in the building, the building's all concrete, it's a hundred year old building, so the Wi-Fi signal doesn't work well here. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. so you're, you're so at funny. your studio, in your home. I am, I am, I'm at my home studio. Um, you know, I want to, I don't want to do like a kind of every detail because we just did a really long interview you and I did <laughs> yeah I don't know how long it was it was like a two-parter like a two-hour conversation we did which is gonna <laughs> be in a book that we were making for your solo exhibition yeah definitely um, so that book is still we kind of pushed it back but it's slated to come out now I think in June yeah. Um, and I just wanted to mention that uh, people are going to be able to pre-order the book. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be putting it on the Bread and Salt website to pre-order because there's only going to be 300 copies, I think, or, or around that. And they're all very special. You're going to sign all of them and you're going to do yeah. drawings and a certain number of them. Right. So there's going to be... Um, the, the number the number of ones that you're going to be drawing and doing special images in are a hundred yeah so that's pretty like limited. special that's yeah. going to be I mean, commercial <laughs> yeah no, I mean, it is kind of a commercial but man, yeah no it's of, awesome though i'm stoked yeah they're going to go fast too and they're only going to be available for a short time unless we do a second printing so bread and salt is doing what we're calling bread and salt press and isabel dutra uh is really taken on that whole project and we're going to start doing major kind of books and stuff like that for 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 all the big shows that we do so yeah you're the first one i'm the guinea and pig have, I'm, I'm excited i have the final version of the cover which i'm going to show a picture of and <laughs> i know it's been contested this oh uh, man i'm so so <laughs> picky of that oh it's back oh it's backwards <laughs> How can we uh, do this? Can I flip it? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to let people figure that out. I forgot that yeah. the screen is flipped, but <laughs> you know what? I'll get rid of that. You know what's cool, though, is on your sketchbook, we all loved your sketchbook because you, you made this character out of the cover of the book. 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so like you to draw a face or bring life to some inanimate Thing. object. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You have this kind of like Pee Wee's Playhouse kind of uh, life where everything <laughs> is like a living creature. Man, I wish. That's yeah. my goal. That's, I know. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> this cover of the sketchbook, though, was, uh, caught everybody's eye and now it became the cover of the book. So, yeah. The yeah, book I love it. The book is called Los Perdidos. Um, can you tell us about that? I mean, I, I'm, yeah. Know, Spanish is garbage, so. I'm trying to find, like, I had a Polaroid around here, but. Oh, I have, I have photos. Oh, I awesome. I actually, I was thinking, I have some more of those Polaroids. Well, anyways, the idea came um, because, uh, you know how Tijuana, there's a lot of swap meets and a lot of, like, pretty cool uh, secondhand stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, every once in a while, you'll find like albums with pictures, you know, like full on like families and stuff. And um, I started finding them. And then eventually I thought, oh, I could like do something with these photos. But it was kind of like a long time of me bouncing back and forth whether I should or shouldn't because I felt a little messed up about taking these memories and, you know, like kind of drawing on them. But they were just like lost uh, photos, lost albums. And I got obsessed kind of like trying to think who were they and who was here. Cause there was some that were connected. Eventually I thought that drawing on them and giving them like a new story and like a new life was kind of like, okay. Yeah. And <laughs> justified like my reason to like paint on them. And now I, I feel okay with it. And I have a bunch of them are, that still are like the same, but I want to, yeah, those are, <laughs> There's a lot more. I have like albums and albums. Is that oh. clear? Can you can you see that? I can see it. Yeah. Jim said that there's chatter in the background. You must be watching a TV or movie or something in the background. No. Chatter? Oh shit! I have a ghost. No. <laughs> I can kind of hear it too. You must have a radio on or something. Hold on. I think it's my heater. Hold on. It's like in another room. Hold on. <laughs> but no well, no no, no. Well, the heater's off you know bread and salt has ghosts maybe there's a ghost here yeah you guys good thing you didn't tell me that when i was at the studio because i was there by myself really late <laughs> no it's like uh, the shining here right now you know nobody's here i'm like walking around corners like <laughs> Oh, yeah, like said maybe an echo. Do you have another device on right now? Like another iPad or computer or Let me see. Let me check. Maybe it's a bad idea to be complaining about the nitty gritty. Um, these videos are imperfect because they're live and the whole nature of uh, going live can be complicated. Um, hopefully we can reconnect. Probably the echo. Um, oh, Ponka left. She left the interview. She bailed. Ponka is gone. I'm going to get her back. Jim says to proceed. <laughs> Jim gave us permission to proceed with the echo. <laughs> I'm like, fuck this thing. The plane's crashing. The I'm back. Maybe I should get closer. Mountains. I don't know. No. Is it? Should I hold it? No, I'm not worried about it. Okay. Um, how can we get this thing back on track? Um, I want to keep it under an hour because doing it over an hour, it'll crash the video and stuff. So. All right. Anyways, you were you were telling us about the the Los Perdidos Polaroids and finding photos. Yeah. Um, so yeah, pretty much I just started getting pictures from different swap meets and um, kind of building a story around the characters. There was all these different there's kids and just like people and I just started making characters out of them and putting faces on them and I've kind of made like a series out of it and that's why I named it uh, Los Perdidos because it's just like lost, lost people, lost stories, um, and yeah. Los Perdidos means the lost or? Like the lost ones. 
the lost ones. Yeah. Um, so many of my favorites are these kind of like lost vacation photos that you have, <laughs> you know? Yeah, those are awesome. They're too good. They're all like, when we were doing the Polaroid uh, exhibition downstairs in the gallery, we, we had this moment where we needed to take one out. And yes. I tried to do it and I fucking couldn't do it. I was cracking up every time I went to remove one and I asked you to come over and see if we if we could decide on one to take out and we couldn't do it. Yeah, it was hard. It was hard. Like, uh, I thought it was gonna be easy. Like, oh, there's gonna be one that's like not that that cool. But not that oh, they're also awesome. But they, they really are like, um, they have a lot of character and they're really charismatic and they're, they're, yeah, they're they, kind they of sinister. Their, they have yes. their own life. Did you say sinister? Yeah, it's like creepy. Yeah. Like, yeah, like the the yeah. one with the the older people that are like on the 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 um, the cruise. Um, yeah, yeah th those people went wild on that cruise. There's, it's funny. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that you say sinister because you're so good at uh, kind of paying attention to these little background features where. You know, I wish I had a better photo of one of these, but there'll be like a character way far in the back that you drew a little face on that <laughs> might be like, that might be creeping on somebody or doing something. <laughs> the pizza guy one is really funny. <laughs> They're yeah, too yeah. Good. And for that reason, we're going to be adding some of the Polaroids to the online store so that people can still buy them online right now while the gallery is closed. Yeah. Um, so those will include a shipping fee and stuff like that. So, but they will, they will make it to our online store. Um, that way yeah. people can still get them and they're easy to ship. They're small, they're Polaroid size framed photographs. So yeah, uh, Los Perdidos. It, it was like, it was the kind of the exciting point uh, for all of us to want to do another solo exhibition with you is because you had this output of all this new, new stuff that you were working on and the photographs were something that we were so excited about. Yeah, you guys really like pushed it up. You guys were actually the first ones to even know about it because mm -hmm. you guys have known I've had it for like at least three years, but I didn't really know what to do with it. And I was wrestling with the thought about whether I should kind of use it or not. And it, and it yeah. actually started with a, a painting um, for the first show I had at Bread and Salt. I had about two paintings that I have here with me and they're paintings that I pretty much like have, were found and then I kind of like painted on them and then I thought, oh, that's what gave me the idea with the pictures. Yeah. So it actually kind of came from Bread and Salt with the experience I had with those paintings and it evolved from there. But it's kind of like my, my you know, kind of ju uh, jumping in with photography, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, the whole in found that, object thing. In but, that 2017 exhibition that we did with you, you had a you had a postcard of these two guys uh -huh. and they, I should have grabbed it out of my studio. It's in my studio, but yeah. um, I, I fell in love with the idea of yeah. you kind of reclaiming this like weird old found image. Yeah. Uh, it was such a smart maneuver to me. I, <laughs> I, I felt like it encapsulated so much of what you do and you, your character and all that stuff. So yeah. Uh, uh, Isabel ended up giving she purchased that piece and gave it to me as a gift and that's how I ended up with that one but yeah uh, I remember she was like Tom loves it I'm, I want to yeah. give it to Tom I was like oh <laughs> that's awesome. yeah that was really cool to to end up with that piece especially because it was kind of an earlier one um, yeah you've been so busy I mean you got to be one of the hardest working artists that I personally know you kind of like you were pacing back and forth you're just kind of one of these people you're you're so you're so constant in your movement and you're drawing all the time you're painting all the time you're doing all this different stuff and i have this memory of you when we were rushing to get this show done which <laughs> it was like you know we were doing so much shit and you're running around you're doing murals and you know parts of town you're painting in our studio here um which i'm going to show a picture of your bread and salt studio which you still have uh, Tom, remember how there's like a sign on the door that says "Go away." Yeah, <laughs> we should that's be so we should be mass printing those. Yeah, like we that's should... so relative right now. <laughs> I'll post a picture of that that earlier or from, yeah. from later. I'm gonna I have some too. I'm gonna post that because that's pretty hilarious now that I think. Yeah, about and it. I I wanted to put that in the exhibition even you know weeks ago because yeah, it's another kind of insight into you as a character. It says. 
uh, it says go away and spray paint <laughs> on paper, but there's still a heart there. So you're yeah, it's away. like, leave me the F alone, but I love you. <laughs> yeah. Like, but it was, it was just to like, I think it was to like myself because I was freaking out about the show, you know? Yeah. That's... Right. So, um, you know, what, what we gave you was a bunch of panels and we basically, I made this room for you. <laughs> And I covered it in plastic like it was going to be a kill room or something. Like Dexter, I, yeah. Yeah. I knew what you're capable of because I've worked with you a few times now. And I'm like, all right, she's just going to go absolutely, you know, nuts in here. And I gave you I, I gave you a table and I plastic the room. Yeah. We basically let you lock yourself in there. <laughs> and you can see what you did to the walls. And now it's like this artifact of you being there and we don't know what to do with it we're gonna try and preserve it because, <laughs> my shoes <laughs> right yeah every every square inch of that space has like something hilarious on it or something absolutely like gut-wrenching <laughs> you know? yeah that room that room is pretty rad it's, yeah, it's uh, so rad i cried a lot in there yeah <laughs> i think I, I i think i cried I, during that exhibition a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> for sure during the install yeah, yeah yeah sorry guys you guys really like i mean i what i appreciate so much is that you made i mean it was horrifying and awesome at the same time to walk in and see that room so set up but then it's like oh my god like i have to fill this but i knew i could and i know that you guys knew i could but yeah. the, the once I got the hang of it and I knew that I could write on the walls, I was like, oh, I need this. Like, I need these little reminders. I have it the same thing in my studio, but there it's just like on steroids, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I basically treat my studio the same way. And I know a lot of artists do. Like, it's just game on, you know, like this is a creative space to just kind of, you know, figure it out and experiment. And um, yeah, you could see this evolution of, of like, almost a timeline in there well there was a timeline. you you did an actual calendar in the in the space which is hilarious you know yeah like, <laughs> yeah laugh now people but everybody that's quarantined is going to start writing on their walls this is, this is right awesome. this is yes. very similar to this i'm gonna post a picture of that timeline too yeah <laughs> but yeah what a what a neat experience having you here painting in the space and creating work and you you kind of you kind of just said for us to pick the sizes so i i basically just i picked a bunch of dimensions that would fill our walls and you had a you had a great idea about doing stuff on the biggest wall but i made you a panel and jason lane who's a design yeah. woodworker in the building he helped to fabricate the panels and we made you a six foot by 12 foot panel yep and we made you a bunch of other sizes huge pieces yeah you guys made like three more i was like can you guys make this and boom you guys were just like freaking on it, yeah. <laughs> it awesome. in, a, in a matter of a month you went from a completely blank space to having an entire exhibition and it was all painted for this show yeah um and all it was it. it was all done with just this you know we knew you could do it like no matter yeah. what we knew you could do it uh, I think a lot of people are kind of blown away that you were able to do it, but uh, yeah. I didn't have any doubt uh, having worked with you on other projects, like the big uh, ice cream. Yeah, you were there stuff. for that. Yeah. Definitely. I, I, I went through, like, uh, that struggle was, I think, more intense because when I did that mural uh, for Bread and Salt, the outside one, that you were, like, you were the, the operator completely. Yeah. Like, you saw everything. And um, I had never been on a lift not a lift, uh, that's a lift, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, let alone, you know, a 40 foot mural. So I kept, people kept asking me, how are you going to do it? You're so small. And I was like having these nightmares where I would like fall. And I was like, right. I don't know how I'm going to do it. So you were, you were there, which was like, basically just like, okay, let's just go. I just said, fuck it. Sorry. Yeah. No, do I get bleeped uh, out on this? Uh, no. I, what? No? Bleep out? Yeah. That'd be uh, cool. Yeah. I'm like pressing a button. Yeah. No, uh, you know, there's this moment where you were on the lift and it, it it's called a knuckle boom. It's a special lift. Yeah. It's a 40 foot high building. It's taller than that, but your mural is about 40 feet tall. It's about, you know, I don't know how wide it is, but it's huge. And I posted yeah. a photo recently and uh, 
it required a special lift and it requires special attention to even operate it. Um, so <laughs> it was funny bringing you up there the first couple times, you know. Um, <laughs> Safety is such a big concern. We have yeah. harnesses and all that kind of stuff, which those things can be scary. But you got over your fear really fast. You weren't afraid at all. And it's no. something that I think is so interesting about people that do street art. And we talk about this at length, I think, in the, in the book interview. Yeah. Um, is that a lot of graffiti people are not, they're not afraid of scale. They're so used to working in the streets and filling a wall and all that kind of stuff. So I think to you doing a 40 foot mural was just like a, you know, it's just a normal kind of thing. Yeah. And there was a moment when we were on the, on the lift and you were, a, you were, you were like this, you were like, you had the can and I, I posted a photo on the bread and salt yeah. story. You were like, you kept going like this. You're like, you just knew when you started that first spray, you were, that you were in it. Yeah. And you were trying to look at your phone for reference and you're it's like, like this, this big. Yeah. And I'm standing right next to you and I'm like, oh shit, what's she going to do? And we're like 40 feet in the air and the cars are flying by and the five and stuff. And all yeah. of a sudden you just did this really you said fuck it and you <laughs> did this really quick gesture and I was like yeah fuck it but what, what are you looking at your phone for <laughs> you know and we were kind of just having this fun moment up there and then yeah once you started you were like okay up down you know go this way and then you basically outlined that entire piece in like a yeah. moments do um, you remember how um I actually was thinking about that and I wanted to talk to everybody because um the scale thing like I had done Laura, I had actually was actually doing at the same time in Barrio Logan a mural that was like six feet tall, right? And for my for, for my friend Tony T for Corazón de Torta, and then I was doing that mural which was like forty feet tall. So it was like, oh. But what what I remember so well was my assistant Mauro. He right. um he I he's like, okay, what what can I do? And I'm like, well, you can be my hands and I'll be the eyes. And you were the operator, so basically what we did is we did like a connect the dots thing. So once yeah. I threw the first lines down, which was like, okay, here, 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 I got off the lift, and then he went up, and he pretty much would be moving, like you would move him, and then I would just tell him, put a dot there. Yeah. And then I basically just connected all the dots. Yeah. Now I, I'm, I'm fine with scale, but um, that, was, that was freaky, because I could feel like people looking at me from the freeway, like it was that high, you know, remember you were right. like, only, <laughs> you were like, only the pigeons can see you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, pigeon judgment. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, going back to scale, I mean, look at the size of this thing that you just did for Clover. This is that yeah, Clover. Clover. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's some of the newest stuff that you have that are that are mural size that are uh, local. Um, yeah. Clover's on PCH, is that what it is? Um, Pacific Coast Highway? Yes, they're uh, right next to the Vespa dealership, uh, past Little Italy. And um, so yeah, there's. If you're, they're heading north on, if you're heading north on PCH, it's on the right hand side after you go through downtown. Yeah, and they're doing delivery and stuff, so that they're definitely still um, working and all that. And with Clover, it, what's really cool is that they, I got to flex with them. They, they gave me um, artistic you know, like liberty to just go big, go large. So that is the entrance, like the, the waiting room. Uh -huh. So so that, and then in the inside part, there's a, a different piece, which is more like an actual wood panel. And then outside, there's like a hundred foot. I don't know what the heck. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's the set. Well, there you go, well, Tom, you're ready. Yeah, this is that's, the inside one. Yeah, that's the inside one. That's very, very 420 friendly. And it's another big piece. Yeah, that's a big, that's a two panel and a neon piece with my friends from, uh, uh, fuck, I forgot the name, but my friend Aaron and uh, Saul, they do these, these great designs. So, Lightworks. Lightworks. So yeah. when you were, when you were doing that, like you were doing that right before the bread and salt show work. Yeah, definitely. You, yeah. You've, you work so, so fast and so you're so constant in your production. Like you yeah. just went from one project to the next and you you did those murals at Clover and you also did a large one outside. How big is the one outside? I don't have a photo I, of that one. Crap, I think it's, oh man, I'm gonna ask those guys, but I think it's like a hundred, like a hundred to 150 feet. Long. And it's, it's, it's freaking long. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's super long. And um, the, you know what, this is something that 
people when I do murals, they go, what? I go, can I feel your wall? And it's kind of very like intimate, but it's like, I need to feel the wall because mm -hmm. it's, it's not so much the size, but the texture of the wall. So mm -hmm. if it's like that, that, that like, you know, bumpy, oh my God, you're just going to use a lot more paint. You're not going right. to be able to use a paintbrush. You're going to have to use aerosol. Yeah. And so for, for the clover wall, that, which was outside, it was a very bumpy wall. So it was my first time where completely I had to use aerosol. So oh, like what? my hand was just like like claw like by the time I finished. Yeah, that you hand. start start using your thumb to press. Yeah, just like ah, the, like maybe I can use my my left hand. And actually, I've learned to use like both hands because of that. Because it's like sometimes I just can't, you know, like. Right. But yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's funny that you say that because as an artist, I try to use both my hands. I don't. I'm not yeah. like right or left handed yeah. when it comes to art, but I yeah. Yeah, do you do the same thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like, you're going to have to. <laughs> um, uh, another piece I wanted to talk about was your, your work at the New Children's Museum. Uh, I know everything's been put on hold right now, but you had major stuff in the works with them. Um, I know. They're in my and heart. And I'm, yeah, we're, we're going to, yeah. They're, this, is a piece, this is a piece that you did a little while ago. This, this yeah. Piece bridge and entrance uh work uh, yeah i love yeah working, yeah i loved um working with them and I had, i'm currently like the artist in residence but right now we're just kind of taking it you know seeing how this all unfolds and stuff but i'm the artist in residence this year and um you know there's a lot of changes and stuff but this was a beautiful experience they're an amazing team an amazing um museum and and let me just look at this like who wouldn't want to go there i went there as a kid so i had like a really a beautiful experience where my best friend as a kid her mom took us and uh they had like the truck outside where you can paint it and you would put on these little suits and yeah. like i think that's the first time that i ever painted something like that you know like aside from school and kindergarten oh that's cool to hear that i mean all these conversations i've had with you it's funny yeah. connecting the dots of like your you know these yeah. moments that were uh you know informative for you yeah, yeah giving, was... giving a kid a moment to just like say paint on a on a car as a as a fun experience yeah, uh, it breaks down like massive barriers, you know. Oh it's yeah, for like kids that want to be artists. Um, oh yeah, like I I I remember it was that, and just the fact that like it wasn't like don't get this dirty. It was like it was just like the 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 free like being able to just paint anywhere and to not worry about it getting on you and stuff. Because in kindergarten, like I still remember like the smell of that pintura or what is it called that whatever that paint that like they use in kindergarten it's a little bit yeah. like softer mm -hmm. so i remember that but i'll never forget being able to just like it was actually like that dexter room that you made it's yeah. you know it all like plasticky and stuff and i just remember that so well it was super super important for me like i think that moment to be able to paint and then to go back and to be invited to work with them it's a dream like i, I love i love going there like i kind of feel bad but every time i go i'm just like I eat in the cafeteria. I like, they have really good food in the cafeteria. I eat there and like, they already know. And, and then I go for my meeting and I check out the Wonder Sound, which is like a really cool exhibition. It's like made for like kids, but you like can crawl in there. It's totally cool. Like all my friends that have kids that um, go, they go, I love it here. And like, I think their parents get more excited about everything, but yeah. So if people go, they might, see you in the background crawling through some kids <laughs> well yeah i think they they may see me there every once in a while i don't know what's gonna happen but i think that right. there's positive things in the future um you know we'll see how everything goes yeah but, hopefully yeah. everything gets back on track it's pretty sad to think of this all happening right now i know i was <laughs> yeah i was not even here so yeah i was like oh, gotta get home oh my gosh yeah, you were just on a trip. So you, we did the exhibition with you that we had the opening and then you had this trip planned. Where did you go? What, what, what did you do? Uh, I, I usually do this like after a show, just the show like drains. It's not the show, but like everything, you know, I was doing all these murals and all this work and, and for everything. And I thought, oh, every once in a while I disconnect and I, I like to head down to the Caribbean. So I went to Tulum. I have um, a lot of friends down there. And I really like uh, like the cenotes, and I just like to like disconnect. And I go to these places where um, 
where I just, you know, I hang out on the beach and I, I yeah. roast. I don't really go out at all. Like this life, this is that that's going on right now. This is kind of what I do all the time. So I kind of just like, boop, I, I go out every once in a while to Tulum. So, you're, so able was, to, yeah. you're able to recharge. It helps recharge. Yeah. You, you probably, you're probably like a moment away from burnout after working so hard on oh, some yeah. projects. Yeah, no, like it's it's just like, oh, this needs to happen, you know. So um yeah, I was I was out there and I was with a friend. We we uh planned a trip and we were out there and the good thing is that we were really isolated, like where we were like in these places that were just like jungle and like a pool and then there's this and that and um, you know, we were kind of like the you know, isolated. So it was beautiful and I had like my dosage of nature. It mm -hmm. kind of helps now, you know, because yeah. I'm not going out at all. So it's kind of like, oh, I came back from the airport. People told me what had happened. And I mean, I came back like almost like with a freaking bag over my head on the airplane because I had to go to three, I had to use like two air air airplanes. It was like, ah, fuck, you know, so Jeez. I came back. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in isolation now, so. Um, yeah, there's this uh, tradition of, in Japan of forest cleansing where people go out and recharge by surrounding themselves in nature. Um, getting a 360 view of nature. And I always think yeah. of that as an artist, it's something I try to do, especially after a big project, just try to like, you know, just take a deep breath in some nature and not be around yeah. total chaos all the time. Yeah, and it's just, there's a, there's a lot of art um, installations and art things out there. Like there's like a couple of fancy museums out there you you wouldn't think, but there there is and there's a lot to do. And I, I you know, I like to unwind out there, but this time it was, you know, I had to, I, the last two days I was like, okay, I'm going to take precautions. And so, I mean, I've just been hanging out here and I thought this is a good time to produce, you know, to, to get stuff out. Yeah. Um, since we're kind of on the topic of, you know, recharging and all that stuff, I think there's a couple questions that might be uh, pertinent. Yeah. So here's one. How do you stay inspired? You're kinda, you kind of talked about it a little bit yeah. just by going on that trip and just recharging and all that kind of stuff. Um, how I stay inspired? My inspiration is um, <laughs> like staying alive. <laughs> no, no, but seriously, um, it, I stay inspired by like all of the mundane things that happen mixed in with what I read that goes on in the world. And then also just by things that I observe. And um, I don't know, just like I stay inspired by everything that goes on around me. It just inspires me, my pets, mm -hmm. interactions, you know, like, I don't know. I kind of observe um, everything. Yeah, just last night you were posting, you know, we were talking just back and forth. Like, you know, you have this VHS collection. And yes. You're, you've, you pulled out a Mr. Bean VHS. Mr. You know? Bean! <laughs> it, like made, it made me laugh for a minute. But I know you have this great sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, not that Mr. Bean is like the ultimate comic or something, but uh, you have you have this kind of uh, appetite for, for funny stuff and cartoons. And um, where does that come from? Were you always inspired by cartoons and funny stuff as a kid? Or what, where were you getting your kind of art dose as a, as a young person? Well, I was like a funny kid. Like I was kind of like a dork and like super just funny ass kid. Like I was just like, I mean, but, and my siblings were uh, older than me. So mm -hmm. I think that being exposed to like MTV, probably, you know, when you watch stuff that, not that I was seeing bad stuff. I think the worst thing I saw was like real world yeah. or like, you know, whatever. <laughs> but um, uh, I think that when I was really young, I was always trying to like hang out with my older siblings and kind of trying to like catch up to like their mentality. So yeah. I always was kind of like, you know, like trying and, you know, my mind was trying to like, you know, get there and I was just a weird kid. So I would, um, I was actually alone a lot. And so, mm -hmm. or with my cousin. So what I would do is I would um, play and draw a lot to pass time. And I was also used to watching like Ren and Stimpy and like, you know, kind of weird cartoons like that. Yeah. And um, that was kind of like my like secret, you know, because it was more like an a more like an adult teenager thing. And I loved it. I just thought it was like the grossest thing ever. Yeah. And, um, I just thought it was cool. And I love the like the dark humor of it. Like even as a kid, I thought, oh, I don't know why I like this. Like it Especially scares me. 
Ren and Stimpy. I mean, the humor yeah. is pretty dark, but also yeah. the illustration yeah. style. So uh, yeah, uh, like, I'll show you. I have this um, really cool. Um, yeah, you can't see it so well, but it's like this. It's a real oh, cell. An animation cell. Yeah, and it's That's like so cool. when he's freaking out. Yeah, yeah, I love it. So yeah, stuff um, like that, and then. I had the Sick and Twisted Festival. I think I was there at one when yeah. they did it, like Pride in La Jolla. I was really young. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I worked at the Contemporary Museum and uh, would always have to, you know, I was a guard for a little while, so I had to guard some of those events and they <laughs> got kind of out of control. Those sick that doesn't Twisted. sound fun, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think there's another couple questions. I just want to yeah. see if we're missing anything here. Um, sorry. No, it's okay. What up, Alicia? She's like, <laughs> Do you face challenges being a woman in the street art scene? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, actually, I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. I know in the book you you really elaborate on that, and uh, yeah, I don't know what will actually make it into that conversation, but I know you've seen some shit out in the streets, you know, being a woman, and had you know some funky stuff happen, and. Yeah, there's actually a painting here that I'm like, uh, I don't, I haven't shown it because it's like, um, I'm going to uncover it because it's kind of dark, mm -hmm. but, huh. but yeah, I'll answer the question right now. So this is like the darkest painting I know I've made, mm -hmm. dark as fuck, but yeah, you know, it's like on current events and then. But yeah, anyways, uh, uh, yeah, struggles as a female artist, for sure. You know, the typical sexual abuse that, you know, all women have to deal with um, that. And that's not normal, but I have to deal with that sometimes, like creepy guys. Yeah. And then aside from that, uh, when I first was doing street art, like uh, urban street art, like in the street, uh, I kind of got in trouble with a couple of like graffiti people. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it was just really like a few people, to be honest. It's just that, you know, Tijuana is very popular for their graffiti. They're, it's just, you know, it's a thing here in any <laughs> town. So it's very normal for graffiti uh, people to have graffiti crews. And when you're not a, in a graffiti crew and you're just some girl and that's like, you know, getting all this attention and everybody's like, oh, what the hell? Like, who the hell is that? Um, eventually, I started getting like a little bit of like crap like in person by some of those like people and eventually that got that escalated to the point where like I would be in my apartment in downtown Tijuana and I would get like rocks thrown at my window and they'd be like hey you know like look outside and I would look outside and they had like like covered a mural of mine or something mm -hmm. so like little things like that escalated to a point where it got like almost violent and then that kind of scared me and eventually it made me go like, okay, so what am I doing? Like, am I, am I fighting for turf here? Like yeah. I have Tijuana covered, like I love Tijuana, but maybe I should start reaching out to museums and yes. things like that. So that was kind of the turning point that, um, you know, so that, yes, I did and I have, and I always do, but um, I've learned to manage it better and kind of like you learn, but yeah, those are some of the struggles. Yes. Do you see a, a version of that happening now that you're showing in galleries and museums and stuff or dealing with people? Do you still see oh, like a... Yeah. Uh, you know where I see it very much? Like in Mexico, when I get hired for certain murals and I have to deal with like the... There, there, if there's, there are certain men that are on the staff and they may see me as like, oh, like who's that? Like this is the painter, like, oh, whatever. And like I have to operate machinery and it just like right. now now I know how to, you know, use my own machinery and stuff and like my own lifts and stuff. But before it was kinda like you kinda get looked down on, like like, oh you're a girl, you don't know how to use a machine or you don't know what the heck you're doing and it's like, No, I clearly know how to use a lift and right and can carry my buckets and everything. But um yeah, there's like a little bit of like that machismo that still exists. So like sometimes I'll get it with certain um people. But to be honest, um people are very uh, I don't know. They've been kind of waking up to that, but I noticed it more when I was in the urban art graffiti area. It's just a lot. It's just, there's less women. So you got to protect each other. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a couple more questions here and we have to keep it under an hour. Otherwise it just, 
you know, it's yeah. so clumsy getting I'm cleaned off at an hour. So For sure. um, oh. here's two things. I know this always comes up and it's kind of a fun little story, but um, why the name Ponka? Is uh -huh. it Ponka for punk? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, my, the nickname Panka came from uh, my friend Tony T, who is uh, one of my best friends. When I was about 20, 21, uh, we would all like hang out. We all kind of lived close to each other. And me and my roommate, Monchis, uh, we, were, uh, we would always say, oh, que panko, or me puse muy panko. Y como te metiste el show? Pues, ah, me metí así bien panko. And it's this thing called like Spanglish, which is basically mm -hmm. like we would say, oh, que acordeón, which means like, oh, that's kind of awkward. So mm -hmm. you're saying accordion, but you're saying like, oh, that's awkward. So, you know, it was kind of like a, a mix of punk, punk rock. And um, my friend told me, oh, you guys are Los Pancos. But my friend had his own nickname. So my friend said, you're Panca. And so it just kind of started like, like we would go to Guadalajara, we would go to Monterrey, I mean, you know, different places. And people started saying like, oh, que Panco. And I was like, oh shit like that's kind of flying around and i thought you know what i want to protect my name when it comes to like signing uh -huh. um, and doing my artwork i didn't want my name and i thought it was kind of like oh so i thought i'm just gonna be banca and that's gonna be my art name and mm -hmm. eventually it just i mean i kind of answered to both as it it's just i don't know i don't really feel the separation anymore so it's yeah like, i mean i i feel like all i know you is panka but um. <laughs> Yeah, so that's where it came from. Sorry, long story, well, but yeah, it is from. No, Fox. that's a that's a great story, and it comes up a lot. Um, you can answer this if you want. Talk about the duality between the the celebrity celebrity and political in your work. Yeah, uh, well, I have a super super political piece like right in front of me that like I've never shown. But I am um, when I grew up uh, when I was you know deciding whether I went to college or not. I was. I mean, even in high school, when everybody was kind of like, prom, I was super into politics. And I was like, super into what was going on in the world. And, you know, it had a lot to do with why I kind of moved to Mexico, because I was super upset. But um, I was also upset, uh, obsessed with like, you know, Mexican politics, I thought I knew anything about. Yeah. <laughs> At that time, I was such an asshole. But um, it pretty much started spilling into like, art, I started doing art, by doing like uh, first um, stencils. Mm -hmm. And the first stencils I ever did, I have one around here, which is like a, it's one that says fuck Bush. And I, it's still up on the street. I don't know how the hell it's still there. Cause it's, it's actually- still, it's, it's still relevant, unfortunately. Yeah. You know. And a friend of mine, she actually went and put another stencil next to it. So it's kind of become like a little wall where like people put up. And my friend Derek Chin, who does Turista Libre, mm -hmm. he actually does a, uh, like a tour and he'll take people to that thing. And it's like, I don't know, I just think it's rad. because it's, it's a neighborhood that I lived a long time in, which was La Cacho. And then to know that that little thing is up, it's like a memory of like, the first things that I ever did, you know, so it's kind of cool. Yeah. And, um, and so that's, a, that's something that has to do politically. But yeah, I'll show you guys like this um, before we go to the next question. Oh, sorry. Uh, so basically, this like super political piece that um, has to do with like, you know, the narcotrafico and people hanging and the drug and the demand. And it's kind of like a more in-depth version of that painting I did for the Museum of Contemporary Art. Mm -hmm. The so, mural? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. On the wall at the Museum of Contemporary Art. Yeah. This one's a little more hardcore, but, you know, eventually I'll show it. Yeah. And I think that that an uh, image of that mural that you did is, I want to say it's in the book, uh, being here with you that they put out. I'm not sure if that is in the book for really? Ooh. Um I can't remember. But yeah. uh, there is a good a good question here. Advice to little girls who love art. Yeah. Uh, definitely. I would look up, um, not just me, um, look up a female artist. That's, for me, that's kind of been like a big turning point, like in anything. Like growing up, I was kind of like a big nerd and a big tomboy. And... Um, you know, my family's like Mexican, Mexican. So like, you know, being the way I was, wasn't exactly like, you know, like, oh. So what I would do is I started like looking up, you know, famous painters, um, just reaching out and, and seeing what they do. Like, not just me, but you know, like I look up to tons, Camille Rose Garcia, um, 
I'm blanking right now, but just like uh, Ms. Vaughn, a lot of, you know, female artists that are just doing their thing, Lady Pink mm -hmm. uh, and um, Glow, Foy Jimenez, uh, just a lot of other artists, like look up female artists. You're talking about street artists too. Yeah, um, street artists, or just like, you know, I don't know, from there you'll be like, you'll find more and more. Uh, Kashink is one of the artists that I love uh, also. And I think that's uh, something I recommend. And also just kind of like uh, keep practicing. It has to be something obsessive that you have to like really, really, really like, you know? So I, I um, Cool. Uh, we have about 10 minutes or so left. I don't want us to get kicked off because it's so clumsy. But one other thing I want to talk about that I was so excited to see you doing is um, – the work in neon. Yeah. So you had you had this piece kind of uh, at your house for a while, and now it's in the exhibition here at Bread and Salt. Yeah. Uh, and there are these simple line drawings. Like once again, you manage to find another way to take what you do and uh, turn it into turn it into something uh, new and real. This this work in neon. It's a simple line drawing. Yeah. Um, and you've managed to turn it into this like living thing. Like we were talking about with these, w the way that you, you know, can turn a yeah. anything into a face or a living thing. Um, yeah. It, I miss it. it it's, um, it's, uh, I don't know. Like I, I had al always wanted to do something with uh, neon, you know, ever since I saw Batman, the one with the, the cat woman and she walks into her apartment, she has that neon sign. And her room was all pink. I was like, Ooh, and then uh, my friends told me, hey, you know what, we could do that. And I thought, all right. And so I, you know, I started investing in doing this because it's an investment, you know, to get this done. And yes. I, I absolutely like was I was my intention was to sell it at first. And I kept it for like two years. I absolutely loved it. And um, yeah, I love I, I wish to do more things with neon, hopefully in the future. Yeah, That's especially bad. with the way you do these sketches and line drawings, they translate so well. I mean, that yeah this one especially just came off really well it's really cool yeah for sure and i i love looking like at the original drawing and just being like oh my god this is so nuts like yeah it's just the neon sign now <laughs> yeah it's kind of neat you're taking you're taking what you do and you're passing it off to a craftsperson to create what they do and they yeah you know, it's a little bit of glass blowing it's a little bit of uh chemistry to get the colors and all that kind of stuff um neon work is really neat and it's you know it's pretty pretty old trade at this point but yeah uh, it's still done the same way yeah uh, so we're gonna start Lightworks seeing SD. more What's yeah that? lightworks sd they they did a great job like lightworks sd yeah they i mean they pulled it through man because it's the, those turns and those swiggle those little swivels are not easy you know it's yeah yeah and have, <laughs> yeah and you know you can have this kind of stuff in your house. I've installed neon works, not yours, but other other artists' neon works in people's houses, and um, it's a thing. So you know the the type of work that people can have in their homes. It doesn't have to be flat work and paintings. It can be a mural yeah. in place at someone's home. You can commission artists to do murals at their house, which I know you've done, and you can do works in neon, and you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, like, if you have a crazy idea, and, and uh, I have some, I have a couple of uh, really cool friends that they're, they have a great space, and they're just waiting for, like, the right thing to put in neon. They have, like, a yeah. karaoke room, and they're hoping, you know, and I'm like, well, when you're ready, we'll do it. Right. But, um, yeah, I like working with different uh, mediums, see what else I can yeah, do. <laughs> and you've also been dabbling in uh, making films and uh, claymation. Yeah. Oh, Count here. Carlo Ruiz, you have, a, you have a piece up here at Bread and Salt. Um, is this, a, this is a new one. Yeah, this is, this is a new one. Um, Tom, it kind of, we got to add a beard to look like you. But yeah. <laughs> That's so but, time consuming what I know of doing yeah. claymation stuff just from back in the day. Like, I mean, you're going, you're going movement by movement, right? Yeah, like basically like, like you get this guy and like you, I have another room where it's just like different size of his eyes, different mouths, like uh, 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 all yeah. that. It's just so freaking time consuming. And then just like turning the head, everything, like, you know, getting this hand to go up and down. It's just 
hours and hours. So yeah, it and makes then, you appreciate Gumby like you never did before. Probably. Oh, heck yeah. Wait, wait, hold on. Check this out. I love it. I have this like <laughs> rare Gumby comic. Yes. I love it. Yeah, no, I, I grew up watching Gumby. So definitely that comes from so my Huh? So did I. I love yeah. that stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so. And it's it's totally timeless. That's why you doing this now and uh, uh, transferring it digitally and doing a projection, it, it it looks just as good right now as it could, you know, 40 years yeah. ago or whatever. Um, yeah, hopefully yeah. I'll, I'll get better at it. But it's, yeah, it's, it's tedious. <laughs> well, I, you know, so many times as artists, like once you perfect a craft, so many artists move on to something else because there's this excitement and never really knowing uh, exactly how to do something. And, and so many artists just work in this like weird line where yeah. uh, they're kind of learning. And that's, that's why I think, uh, you know, so many artists have this, um, they're constantly working their brain. They're constantly learning. It's this whole learning, you know, learning new processes and expanding on simple ideas and stuff. And that's why you never, people should never really uh, give too many compliments or tell an artist that they're doing so great because they'll probably like they that, back and yeah. Abandon yeah. abandon what they're doing. <laughs> that, yeah, that or they'll just be too comfortable and stay there. Like that, yeah. that was, for me, that was my, my greatest like existential problem when it came to the new show. I was just like, fuck, I have, it, this has to be one, show my, uh, how I have evolved as a person and as yeah. an artist and not just look like I'm filling the space. And I have to also make it worthy of what I think is okay. And what have you guys expect? Oh, no, I was just, it was over the freaking moon for me with pressure. But I, I love the way it turned out. Like, I'm, I'm really happy. Yeah, and we've yeah. extended the show in the gallery, I think, into August. We're trying to just play it by ear. We don't know what to do with, you know, running a gallery. So we're just kind of making it up. You know, normally we would have open hours and the public would come and we'd give tours and stuff. But, yeah, you know, we're trying to just make it up as we go. Um, but, yeah, like I said, just kind of finishing up here. In the meantime, we're going to do pre-orders for the book. There's only going to be 300. A hundred of those are going to be very special copies that you've done uh, drawing drawings inside, and they're all going to be signed. Yeah. Um, so they're going to be forty-five dollars for a signed copy, one seventy-five for a signed copy with a with a special drawing. So you get an original artwork basically inside of this much. really special limited book. Um, so it's going to be really cool. So people will yeah. be able to pre-order that on the Bread and Salt website here in the next week or so. Yeah, I'm gonna have a book. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be like just any kind of thing. It's something that it's a first for bread and salt. It's like we're 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 trying as hard as we can to do it the best way. It's gonna have a really special interview with you in it and a writing from Jim Brown, the the owner of Bread and Salt, and Isabel. Jim, Isabel, yeah. the best. I, I know yeah. they're still watching, but um, so in the last few minutes, do you want to show us anything else in your studio? Or you want to talk about anything? I don't know. I mean, you guys want like a little tour? Like, this is uh. Yeah, show yeah. us your VHS stash too, if you're. Oh yeah. There. Oh, hold, hold on. I have to take you guys into my room. Hold on. Well, hopefully that doesn't mess everything up. But. Oh uh, shoot! No, I, don't... I just totally ruined everything by saying that. Um. Yeah. Oh whoa. But yeah, Mr. Bean was my my choice yesterday. Um, yeah, oh, but you got all kinds of stuff there. You got Dune. You got all kinds of things. You have like sci-fi. Yeah. You have you have fun fun all ages stuff. You have like totally <laughs> weird comedy yeah, I have, stuff. And... I think I like Mr. Bean because uh, my mom and I would watch it, and my mom didn't speak English, and I <laughs> and I think it was like yeah, a, yeah it was like a, a good way of just like communicating. Um, through comedy with this guy that like, you know, he didn't really use any language. It was all body. So um, I always connect Mr. Bean with like my mom, like that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, I mean, I have this pretty cool space to hang out with right now during quarantine. My skateboard is at the studio. So I've been using this one. But, oh yeah, I love that old school Veriflex skateboard. That's yeah, cool. but I, I took off this because uh, the bottom things, Cause I was, on the trucks or oh, the rails? The rails. I want to put the, the ones in the, uh, for grinding back, but um, to be honest, um, the, the back, back part was just making me fall. I kept falling, so I just took it off. 
<laughs> so it, that that's a really neat skateboard. It had like a skid, a tail skid protect protector and probably yeah. like a nose protector. That's yeah, a neat skateboard. Yeah, uh, I, I like it. So I got this at the swap meet at the sports yeah. arena swap meet, but yeah, yeah, that's that's an early '80s skateboard. It's really cool. Yeah, I loved it, and it has really love, cool. The bottom part is like total punky colors. Yep, I love it. So and, yeah. yeah been doing that and then just hanging out here in my Dr. Evil chair. Yeah, you have great furniture. You have lots of mid-century furniture and it's really like mid-century style house and Yeah, it's a it's a it's a, it's a pretty pretty nice place to not go out. I'm telling you, this is what I do, you know, I don't really go out anyway. So <laughs> I've just been staying here. And, and you yeah, got lots of house. lots of animals around. I know I'm chilling with my dog a lot and um yeah, you have lots of lots of pets to keep you company. Yeah, these guys are they're the dogs. I have the cats. I mean, they're all here. We're all here. <laughs> they're very demanding animals. Yeah. But well, it's cool. I, I guess just to end it, I hope you do well down there. I hope you stay safe. I know it's such a struggle being locked up and especially, you know. Yeah. You can't cross right now. I know normally you'd be crossing almost daily to San Diego. I'm sure it's difficult to, to not be able to do the normal things you do. Yeah, well, it's, it's, um, what's difficult is, uh, I, yeah, it is a little bit difficult, you know, um, but I think I'm just gonna try and, like, make the best of it. Obviously, the whole work thing is what gets me, but, um, we'll see what happens, you know, for the most part, I'm just gonna try and indulge here in my home and work, and consider myself super lucky that I have a place to work in, so. Yeah, I we're going to yes. put up some of your Polaroids on the Bread and Salt website, too, so hopefully we can sell some of those Polaroids. Um, yeah, definitely. You guys get those Polaroids. And, yeah. um, well, thank you guys for joining me on this talk today. Yeah. yeah. Stay safe and uh, stay away from the virus. I will. And we're going to post this video on YouTube with the rest of them. And, um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you soon. Okay, Tom. All right. Stay safe. Um, Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.